All right. Happy art day. Uh, today we're going to be doing some, some paintings for our weekly challenge. Um, I'm going to do back-to-back -back videos so I have all my paint stuff set up. And I can just do one and then do the other one. So I'm checking my notes. So let's go over materials. We're going to do some... Now, it is a little, little sadness. Um, we started this project before... COVID-19 happened to Chicago. So a lot of these are in the class unfinished. So we're gonna do it now. And then if you've got the materials, you can do it from home. So let's let's do that. We're gonna do our, our airline skylines. So this is gonna be a little bit of a longer video because I have a lot of stuff to talk about. But once I talk through it, then I can I can, I can do it for you. So let's go over materials. Um, we will be doing a watercolor painting. Now, I don't have any watercolor at my house. Um, but I have this paper called Bristol paper. It's just a thicker type of paper. Um, so this will do for, for me doing it, but if you want to participate in this watercolor weekly challenge, um, you need to order some watercolor paper. You can order it off Amazon or off Blick. Um, so if you want, you gotta order watercolor paper. Um, I will be using just some Crayola watercolor sets. The same stuff that we use in class. So if you want to get one of these or if you already have one, you're set. I'll be using the brush that came with it, just the little Crayola brush. This one actually came in the set like this. So I'll only need the one brush. And then I have my cup of water and my paint cup. And I will be using basically a fancy uh, Sharpie. It's called a Micron pen. So this is a permanent, permanent ink that I'll draw with. You can use a Sharpie. Uh, you have to use a Sharpie. Um, you can't use a washable ink because we're gonna make the drawing first and then paint it. Now, um, if this was normal class and I had a whole hour to, to do this with you, but I wanna get it all set in a nice little video so you know what you're doing, um, you could sketch it out in pencil first, or if you want to do, um, just go straight for it with the pen, the permanent marker, that's what I'm gonna do today. But like I said, you could sketch it in pencil real nice and neat, then outline and trace it with the marker, and then erase it. It's totally up to you which one you do. I'm just gonna go straight into it with the permanent permanent ink, okay? So let's talk real quick about, um, we're gonna draw a cityscape, right? So our paper is gonna be oriented this way, landscape setting. A cityscape is a picture of land but has a city in it, right? So I'm gonna show you a really easy way to draw buildings to make them look 3D, right? Look like they have depth, that you could like walk into the painting like it's real life. Um, so I'm gonna show you that method right now because we'll need to use that a couple times. So I'll get my sketchbook out again. Um, so step one, I'll just draw it real quick. Step two, step three. So it's three steps. The paper, there are the lines at the bottom is the bottom of my paper. As you can see in this painting, I went, let it focus, focus, focus. It went completely off the paper, the buildings. I'm not worried about the ground or anything. If you wanna add those details, you can. I'm just gonna draw the buildings. So step one is you draw an arrow like that, okay? And then step two is the corners of your arrow, right? You wanna connect them down. These, this little dotted line is to show you where to draw, but you're drawing from the corner all the way down to the bottom of the paper or that black line in this, in this case. And then the last part is once you have your buildings drawn, you could add windows, you can add patterns, you can add little antennas, whatever you wanna add to detail your buildings, right? So if step one is an arrow, step two is to connect your arrow corners down to the bottom, and step three is you add your details, okay? So now that we have our arrow method set, um, I'm gonna draw, we'll go for five buildings, right? In this picture I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll go for five for this one, so we'll do, I'll, I'll draw all the arrows first, so one arrow there, I'll do a big arrow here, tiny arrow. Now connect straight to the bottom. Now here, my building was gonna touch that. So I'm not gonna go through that arrow, right? I'm gonna just stop at the top because what that does, 
and I'll show you another example right here, is it will show buildings are behind other buildings. So because this side goes all the way down and then stops at the top of that building, this building, the big one, looks like it's farther away. All right, so I have one, two, three, four, and we'll do five. We'll do another tall one right here. Again, start with your arrow. Now, again, you can sketch these first if you'd like. I'm not, I'm just drawing them. You can also use a ruler. And I have this fancy little called a T-square that I could use on the corner of my desk and put the paper there and make a super straight line, right? But I'm not doing that, I'm just freehanding it. That means I'm just drawing with the pen. Totally up to you what you wanna do. So, got my five buildings. I'll add some quick details to them. Like I knew you'll take a lot more time on this. I'm doing it super fast so you can see um, how I do it. And then I wanna see your art. Maybe I'll add an antenna on this one. All right, so now my buildings have a little detail. Nothing, nothing super crazy, right? I just wanna show you the steps. So I drew my buildings with the arrow method. Again, here's a review for the arrow method. Step one, two, and three. And now I've added my details, they're all set. Here's an extra challenge for the sky. I put a radial design in my sky. So a radial design is a, is a pattern based off a circle, okay? So my circle in this case is in the top right corner. I'll do the same one and I'll keep making those circles. Now when those circles get to my buildings, like right here, I'm not gonna draw through my building. I'm gonna draw around it, right? Because I don't wanna cover up my beautiful building art. So now I have a radial design in the sky, okay? Now let's talk about colors. So now I'm all done. Now if you did this with pencil first, you'll need to outline and trace with your Sharpie. It has to be a permanent marker because we are gonna paint today. Um, once it's all traced and you've got all the pencils erased and it's just the black ink on the paper, you can put your pen to the side and we're gonna paint, okay? So for our colors, I did, I made two color schemes. A color scheme is colors that you pick, right? They're very specific. So one color scheme I did was a warm color scheme for the sky, right? So that's red, orange, and yellow. Those are my warm colors. For the buildings, I did a cool color scheme, which is the opposite of a warm one, right? The cool colors are purple, green, and blue, right? Because I have the opposite color schemes, one for the sky and one for the buildings, it makes my painting have contrast. That's two opposites next to each other. It makes contrast, okay? So something else um, that I did, you can see my paint looks a little textured. If you want, I'm gonna start painting in a second and just show you how to, how to paint. Um, you could sprinkle some just regular table salt on your paintings. Now, I only did it in the sky. I did not do it on the buildings. If the paint is wet on the paper and you sprinkle some salt on, it'll crystallize and make this really cool texture. So if you want to try doing that, go for it. So I'm going to set this down, right? Uh, we'll put it, we'll put it here out of the way. I'll move all my stuff. So now let's paint. Now I'll paint it upside down so you can see it real nice. Um, let's review how to paint. So we got our brush, we're using watercolor. Now, as I say in class, you take your water and you wanna make a puddle in the paint. You don't wanna stick your brush in and squish it all around like that. That'll destroy your paint and it'll break your brush. So I'm just taking some water, tapping it, making my green, right? Now I'll paint, we'll paint this little building right here green. Now again, I'm not using watercolor paper, so yours will look different. You need to get a watercolor paper. So I'll do two green buildings. As you see, as I'm brushing, I'm gonna be painting a little faster than you. I want you to take your time. But I'm not pushing my brush in and squishing it like that, right? That destroys my brush. No bueno, not good, right? So I'm painting like this, brushing it, painting side to side like this, brushing it nice and gentle. And then I'm holding it back here on the black part. Your, your paintbrush might be a different color, but I'm not holding it on the little metal part or really close, right? That'll make my fingers get messy, okay? So now I have green on my paintbrush. I always ask this to my classes, can I go straight to a yellow and paint a, the yellow sky? No, 
you can't. So you gotta wash off your brush. I put it in the bottom of my cup, swish it around, tap it on the side. I'm gonna paint my the rest of my buildings first. So I'm doing a cool color scheme for my buildings. So I can only use blue, green, and purple. It is completely up to you. You don't have to do a color scheme. That's just an extra challenge if you want. Um, I'm gonna wash my brush, get some purple. That's almost like a pink, that's okay. It's a light purple. Now if your paint starts to get scratchy or dry like that, see how it's scratchy? Let me hold it too closer. It's getting scratchy. You just need to add more water. So get more water, add it to your paint, and then paint. The trick for watercolors are using more water and less paint. So if it starts looking, uh, like I said, scratchy or dark and sticky, use more water to loosen it up. If you put too much paint on there, clean your brush off. Like if I just did, that's actually not that dark. <laughs> Hold on. If I put that dark paint on there and I don't want it that dark, clean off my brush so I just have clean water on it and I can spread that paint out just like that. Right? Boom, so I've painted my buildings. Again, I'm painting the building solid colors. You'll take your time. Paint your little details on there. Make them super fancy. I'm doing it to show you. So I'm not here all day. And you gotta watch a five hour video, okay? Um, so I'm gonna paint the background, right? Tapping my color in my paint set. I'm gonna start with yellow. I'll do yellow, orange, red. So the next yellow stripe will be here. If I run out of paint, right, I'm dipping my paintbrush in the water, getting some more paint. So yellow, orange, red, yellow. Yellow, orange, red, yellow. Orange, red, yellow. Okay, so there's all my yellow. I'll get my orange now. Now, I'm, like I said, you can add salt to this. Now what salt does is it'll add a little texture to your paint. I did it in the sky of my first painting, right? Right there, you can see that, that little texture forming. Totally optional. You could also add glitter. If you've got some glitter laying around, um, as long as the paint is wet, you can add the salt or the glitter and it'll stick to the paint, right? So there's my yellow, my orange, and I'm gonna do the red. Good. I haven't used red yet, so I'm adding my water to the paint, tapping it, making a puddle. If you don't have a puddle, you need to make one. I'm not squishing my brush down. I'm using the side of it. I'm using the bristles. You will take your time when you paint yours, so you're coloring, you're painting inside the lines. Mine's getting a little messy, but that's okay. Tap, tap, tap. Boom. Boom. And then there we have a finished painting, right? I'm gonna hold it kind of like this. It doesn't drip all over my keyboard. But there, there we go. So if you take your time, this one I took a lot more time on. You can see the details are better than the first, the second painting, right? There's more to it. Um, use the, you have to use a permanent marker when you add your details. Because if I paint on this with washable marker, the water will erase it, right? You don't want that happening. So. Sketch it if you want to sketch. Outline it in Sharpie or a permanent marker. I'm using a, a, a Micron pen. It's a fancy permanent marker. Once that's all done, you can paint on it right away once the ink's dry, right? So paint it. I did a cool color scheme for my buildings, right? Those are blues, greens, and purples. And then for my sky, I did a warm color scheme, my reds, yellows, and oranges. On this painting, I added some salt. And what that does is it adds a little texture to it like that. If you like that, you can try that. You can also add glitter. Um, but then you would wanna just take this, set it to the side somewhere so it can dry. Um, but that's it, that's that's painting with a, a cityscape, right? We made a painting of a landscape, a picture of land, but with buildings, right? And then just make sure you clean your brushes, you wash them out, you dump out the water, and then uh, you put your paintbrush back in your paint set like this, and you're all set, right? So this is our first watercolor assignment. 
we'll do another one. Like I said, I'm gonna do back to back. I'm gonna do another one while I have all my paint stuff out. So get ready for that next challenge next time. Thank you all so much for your, your painting. Remember, when you're done, uh, take some pictures of your finished skylines, your cityscapes, post them in the comments um, on Google Classroom so we can all kind of see what people are making. And then if you want, you can email them to me. I'll give you some feedback on them or just if you want to just show me, I'd love that. Um, but that uh, that's it. Thank you so much. I'll see you next art time.